Hi, Matt from AppWorks, and today we're going to be talking about best practices and specifically commenting code. So what is a best practice? So when I did a quick search on Google, it defines it as a set of proven approaches that when you use them in combination, um, really strike at the root of problems and, and prevent problems. So that's a really good, uh, I think, um, way to think about it. So they're, they're generally accepted, but there's probably going to be some debate. But let's take a look at a FileMaker database. So this is a version of a database that we use for our training classes. And it started out as a sample file from FileMaker. And if we take a look at um, the script workspace, which is the main place you're going to be commenting, notice that in FileMaker, the sample files, there's actually not any comments in the code. Um, so that's not a good practice. Uh, here's a script that I have that talks about what we generally do for basic scripting in, uh, in, a, in a database that's going to be used by uh, several people or even just by you. First of all, I like to always put a date in of when I start it. And I generally put a date in of any change that I make. And I put my initials or name or something so I can track exactly what it is. Mostly this is for when I go back, I can see, oh, I remember when I made that change. Or sometimes you'll see a problem reported where like, oh, on a certain day, you know, last Tuesday, all of a sudden when we started making invoices, this other thing stopped working. Um, you can go back in the code and you see, oh, yes, look, on Monday I made this change and it inadvertently, you know, while fixing one problem, inadvertently caused another one. So putting date and time in or just date in on, um, on your comments is a really good idea. Um, the other thing that I sometimes do is... Uh, I pretty much always do actually when I'm changing context because context is king in FileMaker. When you have a go to layout command or go to related or anything that changes to a different context, it's a really good idea to put a comment there because as you're debugging the script and looking at it, that's a very important line of code. Also, when I have really important things that happen, like a find or a delete or something like that, I'll sometimes put just little comment lines above and below it with some character like a equals or asterisk or something like that. Um, okay, so what if you have, uh, you're really, really serious about commenting. So for example, we have a free commercial system called FMLog. And in FMLog, we have a lot of comments in here. Um, so uh, really more comments than actual code in this case. It gives you a version history. It gives you samples of what you can copy and paste. So you can just click on it and copy and paste. Um, a good thing to track here is if there's dependencies, you know, what is dependent on this script? And what is this script dependent upon? Input and output, um, required parameters, uh, and then like a chain, you know, like we talked about before, a change log of notes. So those are the things that I would submit are best practices uh, for the different cases of FileMaker um, scripting. We haven't really talked about um, scripting inside of code, but if you're doing like a set variable or something like that, when you have a uh, some code here. Um, I think it's a really good idea to also put comments here. So for, for example, if you're doing a case statement and you're looking for if one equals two, um, you can put comments here by putting slash slash after it. Um, it's also very important when you're writing um, to spell things correctly, even though there's no spell check at all for commenting code. Um, so uh, that's another area that we frequently comment is inside code itself. Thanks very much for your time.